I'm Dave McHugh for D3Hoops.com and Hoopsville here at the ODAC Men's Basketball Quarterfinals, and I'm joined by D. Vic, and the only reason we're talking to him is you guys got a big upset over Randolph-Macon. Granted, in a rivalry game, it may not feel like an upset to you guys, but it certainly has ripple effects and really kind of puts a stamp on what has been a tough season. Yeah, it has been a challenging season, Dave. We've, um, we've been awfully close a lot, and um, we've been on the short end of things, but our guys have kept believing. We've learned a lot through those losses, and uh, you know, I think we're playing our best basketball of the year, and so I'm real excited about that. You guys uh, got it handed to you in Ashland not that long ago in the rivalry game. It wasn't close. I said before today when I saw this matchup, that could be the best fuel for you guys and maybe the worst thing for Randolph-Macon. Paige Moyer then followed that up saying, I think I may have helped Hampton Sydney <laughs> because they played really good. Uh, to get ready for this game. How important was the loss? How important was the win then against Roanoke? Well, I told our, our, our uh, radio crew, I thought that uh, at Macon that they might have been able to beat VCU in Richmond that night. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, if you saw the game, uh, the kid Hamilton hit eight three-pointers and four of them were outside of eight feet behind the three-point line. They played outstanding in front of a great crowd. And, um, you know, we didn't play great and uh, our guys were upset about that. And it's really role reversal. You know, last year, we beat them mm -hmm. twice in the regular season, and they beat us in the tournament. And um, this year, the opposite has, has happened. But I, I really feel like we just beat a, you know, a final 16, final eight, maybe a final four type team. Well, they're an outstanding team, and to do what we did defensively was really special. A lot of people in this conference that says, "Don't sleep on Hamden Sydney." I know you guys have had a rough season; it didn't go the way you would have hoped. But they said this is a talented squad that can do something. It starts with Williamson inside. He is. He, some have argued he may be better than the assistant coach he's co learning under in Tyler Zanborn, <laughs> which says a lot. How key though has he been to this team, especially in a game like this where he had to sit for a while? He did. He did, and I thought he handled that really well. You know, Kobe's been awesome all four years, but he, he's really becoming a great leader right now. And he's a, he, we have a player-led team right now, and him and Fletcher are, are really doing a great job getting the guys ready to play. But uh, his confidence is through the roof. He's knocking down his free throws. He's catching every post feed, and he's just a man on the board. So um, we're going to just keep riding his coattails as long as we can. You guys had to manage some fouls today. Yeah, Kobe had three. Uh, you had three from other guys like Owens, and of course you had a um, Greg Lewis. Lewis had ended up fouling out late in the game, but more importantly, you also had um, uh, well, I can't remember who Vassar. Vassar, who you check in with four and, and comes right back to the bench <laughs> five seconds later. You guys had to get in a little bit of managing there. That can get a team in trouble. It seemed like you guys handled it well. Yeah, I thought the guys handled it well. You know, they they really played through that adversity, and um, you know, a lot of the credit tonight should go to our scout team. The last two days in practice, our scout team has done an outstanding job remembering every single play that Randolph-Macon has. We went through it over and over again, and uh, a lot of credit today goes to them. They didn't get in the game today, mm -hmm. but they played a huge role in today's victory. Seems like you also were looking for the matchups, trying to find things. But early on in the game, you guys jump up 12 nothing. They make a run to make it 12-6, or really it was, it was Holmes who made it 12-6. Yeah. And then you guys roll out, and you get up by as many as 20. What was going through your mind in that first half, leading by 20 on Randolph? Well, we, we know they were going to make a run. Um, you know, ironically, it was a couple uh, poor decisions on our front. We didn't box out a couple times. They got second and third shots, and that's really what's got what got their run going. Uh, I wish we'd have been a little more disciplined on our box outs, but we expected them to make a run. I thought what was key was we kept our composure. We kept running our offense. Uh, we executed our offense really well, made good decisions, took really high percentage shots, and, and uh, were able to stretch it out enough. Yeah, you guys ended up shooting 48% for the game. You were as high as 57 at one point. Another key I saw was late in the second half. They clawed, I think, to within three. I think you called a timeout. If it wasn't, it was, it was Nathan Davis. Doesn't matter. Coming out of that timeout, you threw out a 1-3-1 one, one that looked like zone. They didn't see it coming. They looked completely out of gear. And I think that was the only time you ran it, got a turnover, and that stopped, seemed to stop them. Yeah, yeah. One of my assistant coaches, um, Coach Sanborn, said we should try it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a gutsy call. Yeah, uh, but he, uh, he said, let's do it. I asked our captain, Fletcher Lumpkin. He said, let's do it. And so we went with it. And it did catch them off guard a little bit. I, they, they were getting some success in their man offense. Um, and we got a big stop out of that, and it fueled our guys. So it was it was a big play. How do you keep the team from letting down now? You got either Lynchburg or, or Eastern Mennonite coming up in the next semifinal. This is a big win because it's a rivalry game. Yeah. It has a ripple effect across the country. But how do you keep the team focused on now the task at hand of maybe going to win a conference? Well, championship? we're gonna we're gonna get back to the hotel and get them in ice baths. Number one, <laughs> hopefully, uh, and get their muscles back, feeling good. But um, you know, we didn't come here just to beat Macon. Uh, the guys, the guys, you know, we've got a lot of tradition at Hampton Sydney. We've won. 10 ODAC championships, and right now we're t currently tied with Roanoke for having 10 each. 
Uh, we have a lot of banners in our gym, and, and our guys, they want to they be remembered. They know they're, that right here at the end of it, and if we lose, their season's over, and they don't want to see that last game happen. So, um, you, know, we, we, you know, there's a bigger goal than just beating Macon, and that's, that's the plan. And I know that it may not be your guys' realization, but this, lo this win has a ripple effect. This can change who ends up hosting in the NCAA tournament. It can change who's getting going to get a large bid across the country somewhere. Is that something you can guys can fully appreciate, or is it something that hey, you just beat our rival, we're moving on? <laughs> yeah, I mean we, we do appreciate that. I mean we, if we're if we're fortunate to get in the NCAA, which is a long way off for yeah. us, we know we won't get a home game. But um, you know we, we would love we would love that opportunity to play in postseason. But the thing we're doing right now, which I'm so impressed with our guys, we're just focusing on one day at a time, and um, we're going to watch this game here and prepare for whoever we'll get tomorrow, and um, you know look forward to that next opportunity. Of course, the win once again, 68-55 over in the number 13 team in the country, Randolph Macon, Hamden, Sydney, getting it done in the quarterfinals of the uh, ODAC tournament here in Salem, Virginia. For Coach D. Vic, I'm Dave McHugh for D3Hoops.com and Hoopsville. Thanks for having me on.